Hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now today we're entering into part 7 of the extension to the Station Road layout. So part seven, we're going to just touch on the track laying which I have completed or mostly completed around the layout and show a wee sort of demonstration of some aspects of the track laying. And then we actually get into the point control system that I have adopted for the fiddle yard. And I will explain sort of how I went about that and uh, also some of the complexity I actually found in working through the point control system. So I think probably it's important to note the point control for Station Road is all analog so I've decided to sort of keep the point control system separate from the DCC train operation so uh, all the points are controlled via uh, DC power supply and through uh, wired up control panels and of course the point motors themselves are all solenoid point motors of some shape or form so there is some Pico there are a few Hornby solenoid motors in there and then of course there's the surface mount solenoid point motors so I think without further ado Let's just get into this video. So I've got a few trains running on the layout at the moment. I've got my Class 33 Helgen, which was a troublesome locomotive on the original incline. And I've now got it operating up the new incline very well. And it's doing a great job with that rake of wagons. And then we've got our Class 37 BR Green, which is was the re-liveried 37 from an EWS. So rather than actually go through and make a video showing how I laid all this track, I think there's some methods in laying track that are pretty straightforward and I had previously done a video on track laying which was in the yard area when I did some realignment. So there's a link in the top corner to have a look at that which I sort of showed more of a process on it but I thought I'd just sort of describe what I did with this extension and in particular this area here which was relatively complex in some respects mainly because we have this lift out section here so at each end we have set track rather than flexi track because the set track is a little bit more sturdy we can get a slightly more accurate alignment of the rails so in terms of actually achieving a very nice straight section of track, I just simply used a steel ruler to line up on the edge of the rails. When it came to laying this track, uh, of course we knew the distances between each of the rails and I just simply made up a cardboard template to do this. You can buy those track templates and track setter templates and so forth to uh, get even distances between tracks but a piece of cardboard and a pencil makes for a good result as well. So when it came to laying this track really the best method I find is to start where there's any points. So for example here and here, down here, wherever you've got a series of points is to start there because that's really going to determine where the spacing is between the tracks the length of flexi track that you might need and so forth. So in terms of the actual track laying and the joining between the tracks a lot of people you know they'll cut away a sleeper or two in order to allow for a track joiner to be positioned in there. Now wherever I can what I actually do is at the end of the section of flexi track uh, rather than cut the entire sleeper off I just actually splice the rail shoes 
off the top of the sleepers and that way your sleeper is actually going to stay there underneath the track joiner. So it was a similar process over in this area as well. We knew down at this end here where the, was the existing track and some track distances and down here we had some set track on the inner line so that really kind of determined where everything else goes so based simply on one wee end of, of set track I was able to determine where all of this actually ended up being positioned through here so what we're primarily going to be looking at today is how this fiddle yard is actually controlled so each of the points at both ends have just your standard solenoid point motors but it is really the method in which I decided to use in terms of how I control the trains so it took me quite a while to figure it out actually for some reason when it comes to electrical side of things it really really confounds me so it actually took several days for, for me to wrap my head around the electrics for the point motor control here. So we'll get into that now and I'll describe as best as I can the process behind that control. So starting at the control end of the fiddle yard area I began by assembling this lunchbox control panel and I have mentioned this on my Facebook page how I go about just using a simple plastic container to assemble control panels so essentially in a very stylized way you'll see the up and down line now rather than controlling each individual point with a switch I have used push button switches that basically activate the route that I want to choose so for example if I want to run a train through this line here or if there is a, a train waiting in this line here I would simply push that button in doing so it would switch this point to that direction it would switch that point to this direction it would switch that to that direction that one to this direction and that one to that direction so by pushing this button I'm ultimately controlling one two three four five points in one go so if we just sort of take a closer look on the inside uh, you can see uh, the wiring here so uh, we of course we have our common wires all hooked into basically a terminal strip here and then we have individual wires for each of these switches going out now what I've also done is labeled each of the sidings within the fiddle yard starting from the top we have our A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H lines and then from each of these switches we have a, another common wire that comes out for each of these wires and then each wire here is labelled with its corresponding button so all of these wires will now go into a terminal block when it's all hooked up and then from there the wires will feed out to the actual fiddle yard itself so for each of these buttons the idea is that they will control a series of points in order to activate that particular route now I originally just assumed that if I push that button it's going to change that point change that point change that point change that point and that point and simple as that but on closer inspection and actually doing a wee bit of research I realize that in for example pushing this button here it's going to actually send a signal to both sides of a coil on one of the points or 
possibly even more than one point that it would actually send current to both coils and of course we don't want it to do that it's just simply through the wiring of hooking up multiple point motors to the same supply that you actually run into this issue so what I actually found out was that in order to avoid power going to both sides of a coil we had to create a diode matrix now many of you will ask what is a diode matrix so I've got an example here which uh, I found on RM web and there are many different types of diode matrix but essentially we have a circuit board with a lot of wires coming in and a lot of small diodes which are the little black cylinders that you see there soldered into the circuit board now this example here is actually by DCC Concepts and they kindly actually produce a diode matrix circuit board and supply the diodes as well and it's a simple case of soldering up the required diodes and point motors as they suit your layout but when I look at this all I see is utter complexity and confusion so hence why it uh, took me a few days to wrap my sort of head around whether to go down this route using a pre-established circuit board or to actually sort of come up with maybe possibly I wouldn't say maybe a more simple method but at least a method that I was sort of able to understand a bit better so one of the first questions I actually had for myself was why do I actually need a diode matrix and this was the part really I think that took me a while to figure out now if we just take a closer look at this diagram here which specifically relates to the fiddle yard in the hidden section of the new layout and what we have here is left and right coils on each of the point motors so that's these items here and corresponding power depending on the routes so we had a b c and etc the little black dots here they actually represent a diode so what i needed to figure out is why were the diodes needed and this part really did take a bit of mapping out in my head so for example say we wanted to select route B to operate a train through so by pushing button B that sends power to the right coil of point 0.6 which in turn flicks the point blades for the train to travel off on the left hand track it also actually flicks the left hand coil on point 5 which forces the blades to the left hand rail allowing the train to travel on the right hand track hoping this all makes sense now in doing so what we have here is the orange wires connected to the right coil on point 6 but we also have C and D buttons connected to that right hand coil so as you can see if I push B that would mean that power would also travel back down through here and into push button C it would then actually travel along here and through into this one so essentially what's going to happen is that power is going to go to that coil it's also going to end up going to that coil so you end up with both these coils being powered at the same time and essentially what will actually happen is it'll be like a tug of war uh, going on inside this point motor that so that is why the diodes are required because essentially a diode is like a one-way street 
it only actually lets the current travel in one direction. So we wanted the button B to power the right hand coil but we didn't want it to come down and travel through here and also power the right hand coil on point 5. So on these two connections here is by placing a diode here we're actually stopping the current from going in a backwards direction back to the switches. So I kind of hope that makes sense. Now within these circuit board diode matrices I couldn't correlate between the sources of power. So based on mapping out how the current actually behaves between each of the point motors and the push button switches I was able to work out this wee diagram here that is essentially my version of a diode matrix because I kind of felt that I understood it more in this way as to how the current is actually flowing to each of the points as opposed to on a circuit board with diodes randomly placed. So these grey areas represent our terminal blocks and then we have our diodes that are wired in between each of the terminals and then we also have some wires connected up that didn't need diodes placed on them. To this end we have our power coming in from our buttons and then of course at the other end is our point motors. So using the diagram that I'd set up on the computer it was a simple case of printing that out and adhering it to just a thin bit of MDF. Of course I'd set this all up on the computer to scale so we then ended up with our terminal blocks which I've hot glued into place and we have our terminals for the push button switches and then the terminals for each of the point motors. Now I've set up one of these panel per end of the fiddle yard so uh, of course one is up and the other is down and this panel will be positioned near the location of the actual points themselves. So I started to assemble one and this one here I have set up. So I have thoroughly tested this with points loosely connected to it and it is all working and the points are being controlled as they should through the push button operation. So I certainly hope you found this particular episode interesting and hopefully it may have actually helped in terms of wondering how the point control system actually works and the use of the diode matrix. Now whether or not I explained it well enough in terms of its complexity. I certainly hope I have. If any of you have any questions whatsoever please leave a comment because I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have or if I need to explain anything in a little bit more detail. So the plan is in the next episode I'll have these diode matrices up and running and hopefully I'll be able to capture through video somehow the operation of the uh, fiddle yard point motors. So I'll leave it there for now. Thank you all for watching. Take care everyone and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.